Hi, Jeremy here, Modern Vitality. In today's video, how to help anxiety from candida, we are going to be exploring candida and how it can cause anxiety, how it can disrupt different body systems. And once you have these disruptions, then you're going to have this dissonance happening internally. And a lot of times the anxiety is just produced, right? It's a symptom. It's a secondary symptom of having something like candida or another hidden pathogen or a cluster of hidden pathogens or an inflammatory condition, right? The list goes on. Anxiety is quite common with the types of people I work with. And it's something that you don't have to identify with, right? We're going to go through all this. We're going to look at whole systems and how to figure out what to do next for your body. I'm not giving you medical advice. Of course, I'm not your doctor, right? You're a responsible adult. You're here to learn. And <laughs> that's the caveat. But I'm going to share with you the best I have. So let's get started. So I pulled up the definition of anxiety here. I just looked up online. It says a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome, right? So for example, he felt a surge of anxiety. And then there's another one, more of a, the medical definition from psychiatry, a nervous disorder characterized by a state of excessive uneasiness and apprehension, typically with compulsive behavior or panic attacks. Okay, so we can see already here that there's a spectrum with anxiety. Some of it's just a general human tendency, a general human trait to have a little bit of uneasiness about uncertainty, right? I'm, I'm going to offer the suggestion that that end of the spectrum maybe is actually normal, right? Some anxiety might actually be healthy. It might have a survival advantage for us to feel that way. And I'll speak more about this in just a moment. On the other end of the spectrum is something that completely disrupts your life, okay? And completely takes hold of you and now has basically acted along with other symptoms you may have like brain fog or fatigue or weird pains or whatever it is, right? Uh, bowel issues, you know, these things can come and kind of hijack life. And that's where it gets to be a real problem because now it's not serving you, right? This mode that we have in our brain, right? That, that creates this anxious feeling at a low level, it's healthy. Maybe, right? I'm going to offer you my opinion. Again, I'm not your doctor, right? This is like for responsible adults looking to learn more. So I'm not diagnosing anybody here and I'm sure not giving you medical advice on YouTube, right? But what I will do is I'll, I'll offer you my perspective. Some anxiety I think is healthy, okay? We are born as humans traditionally into a world of uncertainty. That's just the way it is. That Those are the cards we get dealt. That's the game we're playing. That's the table we're sitting at. It's an uncertain world. The illusion of certainty is dangerous, right? Because people crave it. People crave certainty a lot. It soothes us. As I'm sitting here recording this video, right, I don't have to worry about my French doors exploding and glass just flying into my face, right? I'm not sitting here wearing a helmet, okay, for example, because it's just not on my radar. We want to live in a place where we have stability and certainty about our near future. And there are some things that are just so out of the realm of imagination. Like, why would my doors explode here? That's crazy, right? What I, I don't think about a meteor falling through this ceiling and just smashing me, right? Again, I'm not wearing my helmet <laughs> for this video. There are so many things. These are just the first couple I could think of off the top of my head. But if you start down this, you could go, oh, you know, what could go wrong? So many things could go wrong, right? There could be anything could happen, okay? But for the most part, our brain doesn't tend to be that vigilant about stuff that's a very, 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 very low likelihood. We just don't use the brain power on it. However, we are trained. Our brain has evolved to have a little bit of attention paid to bad things or problems that are of a, a higher likelihood. So for example, you know, the old stories of humans evolving and you see the bush moving or something and it's like, there's a little bit of you know, a little bit of unease and, and all that because you, you don't know what's in that bush. Is it a predator or a tiger or whatever that wants to eat you? Or is it a, a bird, you know, plucking a berry? Or is it a, a squirrel or something? Like, what is it, you know? So there's a little bit of kind of built-in response where we have a, a little bit of a freeze, right? A little bit of a flinch. And that is a function of anxiety. It's a response to uncertainty. It's a slight unease. When we get new information and we, we're not sure how to handle it, Right, we have this mechanism. So I'm going to tell you in that context, I believe anxiety is our friend. A little bit of anxiety. Okay, I know this is counterintuitive. Anxiety is a problem. I don't like it. It's uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good. Sure, at the low level though, even though it doesn't feel good, it's still helpful for us. It keeps us alive. Just like exercise. It doesn't feel good, right? <laughs> it's a horrible feeling, you know? You're running until you, you, know, you, it's like, oh, I don't feel good. I want to throw up. I can't catch my breath. Or you're lifting weights or whatever and you just feel that fatigue. It sucks. It's a horrible feeling, right? 
but it helps us get stronger. So while well, exercise with complex chronic health conditions is gonna be, it's beyond the scope of this video, right? Needless to say, don't go run a marathon if you have an inflammatory condition, because you're, you're usually gonna pay for that, right? Don't push through exercise. So I'm gonna just caveat that, right? I have other videos about that. So just look at it, first of all, as anxiety is there, default, pre-programmed, right? It just comes factory installed in our brain and it's supposed to be at a low amplitude and it's supposed to protect us, okay? So right away, we're gonna stop alienating this feeling like it's some horrible thing your brain's doing because it's broken. It's actually doing something that it's trained to do, that it knows how to do, that's good. It's just doing too much of it, all right? Too much of it. Now, at the far end, when you're having panic attacks and things like that, it's doing way too much of it. And this can be really, really frustrating, really frustrating. When we go through this process and you start to feel panic attacks and you can feel a disconnection between your rational mind and your autonomic system happening where your body and parts of your brain are getting revved up and freaking out. And there's another part of you watching and observing that and going, this is ridiculous. Why do I feel this way? There's nothing wrong. There's no tiger in the bush. There's not even a bush moving. Nothing's happening, right? Why do I feel this way? This hypervigilance, okay? So what I'm gonna offer you are perspectives, perspectives only. But what I will tell you is that it's a fun and curious perspective to take, and I find it a lot more empowering if we start to think about symptoms and unpleasant things as being signs from our body, even though they don't feel good, right? But it's our body communicating to us, to our brain. And when we see the bush move and we get a little jumpy because there might be a tiger in there, okay? That's the same mechanism you're feeling when you have a complex chronic inflammatory condition. So oftentimes, in a desire to be helpful, medical professionals, patients, like everybody kind of thinks in this one for one type of thinking where they try to counter things. So if you have anxiety, they say, okay, no problem. Uh, it looks like your anxiety levels are coming up. Here's a sedative to push it back down. Okay, we'll just flatline that, try to keep you balanced, <laughs> right? Meantime, now you're, you're medically dependent on sedatives right? Long-term, there's no path to independence, medical independence. That's a big deal, right? The people I work with, we've got a culture. In our group, we have a culture of medical independence. Is that radical? Does that mean zero meds ever? No, right? But it means on, on a longer timeline, you're doing things that have the likelihood of making your body more resilient and stronger, which means that you can outgrow those things, whether it's herbs, supplements, pharmaceuticals, whatever it is. And of course, you got to work with your prescribing physician on all that. We work towards medical independence, the people get there, it looks different for different people, right? Some people still like to have herbs in their life or they like to take certain supplements or whatever, or you have things as needed, right? It's not black and white, but the intention, the way we look at our interventions is always aligned towards, is this intervention long-term gonna make me more dependent on it? Think about it, okay? This is one, one way to look at it. So when we counter symptoms, anxiety's coming up. Well, smash it down, right? Take a sedative, you know, take a Zanny. You can do all these things. That's one way to do it and it can help in the short term. And I will say it can help in the short term and that's good because panic attacks are really disruptive and they're not fun. And so if you have to do something to smash that down in the short term, great. I'm not here to tell you you're wrong at all. Make it work. However, what I would offer is that long term, Right? When we put out this initial fire, we want to start making long-term plans so that your underlying system can get healthier and stop generating panic. Right, Your body is generating panic for you. We want to get that processed. We, we don't want to fight the panic. Right, We want to actually work with your body and listen to the panic and go, where is this coming from? Right, Nothing's wrong. Why do I feel this way? Hmm. Okay. Once we flipped it and we start looking that way, interesting interesting insights will come and we will see our problems from a whole different perspective. So we don't want to suppress it always, right? You might have to in the short term, but that's not a job done, right? We have to keep working on this. And now we have to find what's going on with my body that it would generate these things. Is my body broken and dumb? Is it stupid? Is my brain broken? No, come on, right? We don't, I don't deal with like that kind of attitude. Of course, your body has to be respected, right? It's not stupid. It's not dumb. It's not broken. It's a miracle that all these molecules are holding themselves together and regenerating constantly. Think about that. Go all the way back to, we're made out of stardust, right? What are these elements that have organized themselves around a living vital principle? Okay, this thing's magic that you're walking around in, even if it doesn't feel that way. Even if you feel like I've got an illness, right? I've got a complex chronic mystery illness. Well, you're still alive. That's amazing. 
right? We have to come from that perspective and go, all right, let's respect that. And now, right, with that kind of value in place, now our perspective is what's the body trying to tell you? So I'm going to break this down. Stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. Okay. Stage one, immune system. Stage two, digestive system. Stage three, neuroadrenal. Stage four, blood circulation. This is how we process complex chronic inflammatory conditions. This is the order. This comes from Eastern medicine where I have a very strong background and we're finding the more and more studies and research and Western medicine and bioscience I look at, the more and more that approach is validated. Now, why is there an order? Okay, it comes back to overwhelm, right? So if you take all the things, if you take a whole systems view of your body and you go, wow, I've got, a, I've got work to do everywhere. My immune system, my digestive system, right? There's symptoms all over the place. My libido shot, there's problems with my hormones. Like here, here comes the list, overwhelm again, okay? You need to be able to stack this stuff up and organize it. And I've said in other videos, and I'll say this a thousand times, we tend to look for a key that's gonna unlock our health, right? And this comes in the form of like silver bullets, always like, oh, this new supplement or whatever, just some shiny thing that understandably, it's like, maybe this one will be different. I need that thing. My hope bank is running out. Like this is my last chance. I gotta have this, right? And we try the key and maybe it fits in the lock or maybe it doesn't. Maybe it opens the door, but it turns out that you feel better for a month, but there's downline longer term consequences of a month later, you get some of the worst blowback in your life, right? That happens. I would offer the suggestion that unlocking your health is not the matter of finding the right key for the door lock, right? It's not a key lock in the first place. It's a combination lock. Let's think about that, right? What's a combination lock? You're gonna have to have multiple inputs right? You got to have the right numbers. Okay. You got to have the right things, the right combination of things. And then not only that, you, you can't just give the right numbers to the combination. Like you've got to put them in the right order or it's not going to work. Our body's the same way. It's amazing when you start to decode this and what the body's asking for and be able to read between the lines of research papers and look at pharmaceutical side effects, look at issues of medical treatment and how come sometimes things cause other problems right? There's a lot to navigate with that. So that's part of my job. It's part of my work. It's very satisfying. It's uh, it keeps my brain busy, right? I, I dedicate a lot of bandwidth to this stuff, but so far what I've seen really reinforces our order and clinically too, the results speak for themselves. So when you're looking at your body, okay. And you're thinking about anxiety, most people start with stage three neuroadrenal. It's anxiety, right? You're nervous. You're, what does it say in here? You have like a deep uh, unease and some panic attacks, right? Apprehension, all this stuff. It's, it's nervous system, right? So we start there. We start with methods that interact with the nervous system. So that's where we start. However, I would offer you that if we look obliquely and we look whole systems, there may be issues in the immune system that can cause anxiety. Whoa, right? Why not? Well, let's think about it. What's going on with your body? Why is it communicating? Why is it generating anxiety? What's it trying to tell you? right? It's trying to tell you something's wrong. Just because you look around and there's no tiger in the bush and there's no bush you can find, you're looking outside. If your body is always self-scanning and aware of what's going on inside of it, there's plenty of bushes and plenty of tigers in there. It's trying to let you know. These are the crazy things. I mean, this stuff sounds, it sounds really woo-woo and like out there, right? I'm going to, I'll share this anyway. But what I've found is that a lot of the people I work with too, they back this up because the dreams even, like the subconscious knows these things in your dreams. You can have these dreams of like zombies or being chased or having some kind of a attacker come in. It's very violent, like a lot of this stuff and what's going on, right? Besides the adrenalizing dreams, right? And also the, the vague anxiety that can come in the panic. What's going on is your body's talking to you about invaders. Your body's telling you there's pathogens in here. I don't know how to handle this stuff. We are under attack. So this sounds pretty straightforward. If we're talking about mold, mycotoxins coming in, right? Or a virus coming in or a bacteria coming in, right? Like Lyme disease. This sounds pretty straightforward. We have something that doesn't belong there that's aggressively trying to attack you. It's just invisible. You don't see the bush, you don't see the tiger, but your body does and it's sounding the alarm, right? Let's get on our body's side again. Let's not fight it. Let's listen to it. Oh, I'm just so uneasy. I feel like anxiety. Yeah, well, it's because there are hidden pathogens tearing you up inside. They're trying to eat your nervous system, right? They're hiding from your immune system. They're doing a lot of very advanced tricks using things like molecular mimicry to try to blend in and camouflage themselves and create autoimmune type conditions by tricking your immune system. 
most people with any kind of complex chronic inflammatory condition have underlying nonspecific inflammation, meaning they're always kind of inflamed, right? Everything's kind of close to the threshold anyway, and the immune system doesn't know how to be specific and actually target the right pathogens in the right way. We can help this along, right? I have a bias towards Chinese herbs, Eastern medicine, breathing exercises, these kinds of things that can actually change the immune specific breathing exercises, not just like what you did in the yoga class once or whatever. There's very targeted things you can do to change the way the immune system can handle these types of threats. Very cool, very empowering. Sometimes the cure, right, for anxiety is not to suppress it with a Xanax, it's to actually listen to it and start working on your immune system and take out some pathogens. And then your body's not sounding the alarm so much. This is one of those things that happens with mold, especially I had a personal experience with this where it's like heart's thumping. I'm freaking out. What is this? That's not like me. I don't, this, you know, this is a, a strange feeling. I don't like it and get out of the mold, start healing my body. And it's not an issue again, right? That was my body talking to me. We're under attack in this house. Get out of here. And you feel the mobile as you, you, know, you feel the panic. You feel your body mobilizing. You feel everything, the urge to like, ah, I'm going to freak out. Well, yeah, it's because you're, body's trying to tell you get out of this environment, right? Listen to that. Don't drown it out. Imagine if I just took a bunch of pills to try to just suppress it, you know, or however else I want to just medicate it. Even natural things. I talk about pharmaceuticals, right? But a lot of natural medicine, even some Chinese herbs, like it depends on the mindset of the practitioner if they understand these kinds of oblique interrelationships or not. Because you can still use alternative medicine in a symptom suppression kind of way right? It's the same strategy. It's just different tools. So it doesn't mean that just because you're using herbs that you've automatically done this whole systems type process, right? It doesn't. And, you know, we're not immune to that. We've got to keep our, our minds sharp, especially those in the alternative health field, right? We really do. So that's a bit of a tangent, but you want to start listening to that, okay? Maybe there's an immune component, an inflammatory component. Maybe some of the inflammation is actually in the central nervous system, okay? Pathogens love that. They, once we have a leaky blood-brain barrier, which there are many things out there in the world now, especially things that have been recently invented in the medical industry that seem to cause that leaky blood brain, right? So now you have things getting into your brain, into your central nervous system that shouldn't be there. And there's an inflammatory response there. Can you imagine your brain with a bunch of inflammation? What do you think that would feel like? Don't you think the alarms would be going off? <laughs> right? Of course, of course, it's natural. This machine that we walk around in is incredibly intelligent and wise. And that's just stage one, right? Immune system. What about the gut? What about stage two, digestive system? Well, scientists are now, you know, it's been about, what, 20 years or so since they discovered the microbiome, right, that's in the gut. Things that Eastern medicine and traditional diets and traditional wisdom have been recognizing for a long time is that you have to treat your body as something to be cultivated, right, as a garden to be cared for. And we're now finding out there are actually these tiny little organisms that populate our digestive tract, right? Bacteria, viruses, fungi, all these things can be in a very healthy balance. And what happens when they're not is we can have disruption along what's now been coined the gut brain axis, right? Which means that there's a connection between your digestive system and your mental health. Isn't that interesting? So what if, right? What if you could actually work on your digestive system to get the anxiety to be better. Wow, isn't that interesting? Of course, with stage three, neuroadrenal, that one's pretty direct, pretty straightforward. Speaks for itself. Stage four, blood circulation. Same idea. Check this out. Your, your immune system and your circulatory system have a balance, okay? And they're, they're doing like a, a balancing act to keep you alive as best they can. And when we have pathogens come in and they start to root down and get in there, right? They become hidden pathogens. And this can happen with viruses, mold, bacteria, like all this stuff, you know, um, candida, of course, right? There's so many of these things that can come in. And most of these chronic conditions, like anything with uh, a mystery around it, right? Where they haven't identified a particular pathogen, I'm willing to bet that those symptom clusters are coming from a pathogen nobody's looking for or nobody's found yet. Okay. That's just my I'm going to throw my hat in the ring on that one. Okay. Pretty much everything complex and chronic has a hidden pathogen component. So once those pathogens are in there, there's a balance between your immune system and your circulatory system. Your immune system, right, wants to isolate these pathogens. The first thing it would want to do is kill them and get them out. But a lot of times they can't figure it out because they're tricky. That's what they're designed to do is to try to evade your immune system. You know, it's not always a slam dunk. So they're 
fighting them, and then the next best thing is to contain them, keep them in one place. Now, on the other side, your circulatory system is saying, hey, we need to pump blood everywhere, right? Because we gotta keep this, we gotta keep this ship alive. You know, this vessel that we're in needs to have blood and all the cells need fuel, right? The balance is the immune system says, hey, you can't pump the blood like a lot because I'm trying to contain this mess right here. You know, we've got some thing in the throat, neck, wherever it is, right? Some pathogens. We're doing like a police chase. We've got the whole block sectioned off. Please don't pump all the blood because what happens? Now you're pumping all the blood. More circulation means more pathogens going everywhere throughout the body. They can get deeper in the body. They can go to vital organs in the body, like the heart or the brain. So there's a balance. Everybody has this mechanism built in where when we are attacked, right, we tend to have mechanisms to make us feel tired. This is one of the ways your body generates fatigue, by the way, to protect you, right? Fatigue is another one where it's a symptom that's miserable, ruins everybody's life, but it's a protective mechanism because it's like until we can sort out these pathogens, we don't want to risk moving around and exercising and pumping blood and getting them everywhere. So your circulatory system tries to do bare minimum right? What that means a lot of times, cold hands and feet, right? Just low blood flow, low blood circulation. Let me ask you a question. If you have a lower blood flow anywhere, right? It's basically the equivalent of being choked, being strangled. If you have low blood flow to your extremities, right? There's going to be a little bit of panic there. Hey, we're being choked. If you have low blood flow to your brain, there's a little bit of panic there, isn't there? We're being choked. The anxiety you feel with complex chronic health conditions can come from a variety of causes. Oftentimes there's more than one. Oftentimes they're overlapped. There are all different reasons for anxiety. It doesn't mean something's wrong with you or you're crazy for having it. One of the problems with anxiety is that you get the anxiety and then you don't understand it. And then the fact that there's something you don't understand happening that's unpleasant causes more anxiety. <laughs> okay, it's that's a horrible loop. Try not to fall into that. If nothing else, this video can help you break that because you can go, hey, there's at least four reasons. I just learned, Jeremy said, right? There's at least four different reasons for this, why I feel this way. I don't need to get anxious about being anxious. I need to start getting curious about being anxious and try to figure out which one or more of those four is probably at play here. And I'll give you a hint. You're a connected complex system. It's probably all of them, right? That's why going after just stage three doesn't tend to work because you skipped stage one and two and you're never even going to go look at stage four, right? Going out of order. So I hope these kinds of frameworks help you to understand this stuff because anxiety is, is miserable. It doesn't feel good. We have to go into the things that don't feel good. That's where the signal is, right? That's, we have to go through the noise and find the signal. If you're struggling with a complex chronic health condition, please know that you do not have to struggle alone. I have assembled a lovely group of human beings. We're international. It's all people that are working through this type of process. It's a free group. You can find the application link in the description below this video. If I see your application and it looks good, like you could be a great fit for our group, I'll get you in as soon as I can. We keep it cozy. There's about 100 to 200 people is the max. That way I can answer your questions and I know who I'm talking to and I can give like good perspectives, good information. But because I keep it small, there can be a wait. We fill up. So I'll try to get you in within the next month or two. We have monthly cohorts. So hopefully I can get you in within the next month or two and you know, I know you don't want to be waiting forever to get help. So this is the place to be. You can hang out with other people that are on a healing journey. You can ask them anything you want. You can watch me troubleshoot because although people are on an upward trajectory in general with their health, right? I'm helping people get out of the, the pits of complex chronic inflammatory conditions. They do have setbacks. They do have triggers. They do have bad days. They do have flares. And you can see what happens and how we navigate that when, it, when a crash happens and how we can get out of that using this kind of model so that you always know what to do next. Very liberating, very liberating. So I'd encourage you to apply for the group if you think it's a good fit, if you think that would help you. And in the meantime, you can also subscribe to this channel. That way you can get more helpful information like this video so that instead of watching uh, TV or Netflix or just scrolling a mindless feed, which we all do sometimes, right? Instead of that though, maybe you could teach YouTube to send you more videos that help you reclaim your health and get your life back, right? Wouldn't that be cool? All right, let's get you feeling better. Cheers.